Okay, so this is my first video of um, for intractable pain. Um, as Forrest Tennant, Dr. Forrest Tennant would say, I am a rare bird. There are, uh, I guess, according to the numbers in the world and the numbers in the nation, not a lot of us in comparison to other people with just chronic pain or acute pain. Intractable pain is a form of torture. It is something that you could never imagine living through. Um, you wouldn't think that someone could actually live day to day, minute to minute, second to second in such enormous amounts of pain and survive it but you don't have a choice there's no choice you have to survive it and um so here we are and i know there are others out there i've seen other videos uh, we all have different reasons for being in intractable pain some have rare forms of diseases or things uh, that cause, I guess, nerve endings or what have you to overreact. Personally, what happened to me is very cruel and it's a horrible way to live. In 1986, I was in a motorcycle accident. I was on the back of a motorcycle and a drunk driver in a van hit almost head on the motorcycle we were on and he took me off the motorcycle i was just barely 18 years old and i was about 95 pounds i'm about five feet tall so it was a little little thing and he took me um off the motorcycle and i rolled with him i was stuck on it about five times and he tore me apart he tore my leg to shreds ripped it completely to shreds i have the photographs of the leg to show i'm not gonna pull them up here i think it would be um i don't know i'll take your votes on that if you want to see the pictures they are explicit they are very gory looking um, but I do have photographs that they took at the hospital of my leg uh, before they did the surgeries on me because it was really bad and they I was I was in a bad state and they wanted to show and prove that um, that I they didn't have a choice I guess for the records and they gave them to me after I was leaving the hospital to show the judge when we were prosecuting the drunk driver. So I had my leg torn apart. I also had my pelvis, pelvis fractured, broken literally in half. One entire side of my pelvic top and bottom part was completely broken off. It snapped in half. And so they had to put pins, four pins in each of my hips and a vice that came up and over my stomach where they tightened it and pushed my pelvic bone back together for it to heal, which it's kind of cricket now. My pelvis is sort of like this instead of straight, it's cricket. And, uh, and they broke my left arm. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but I have a, a scar here and uh, they broke my arm really high up. They had to put a plate in there um, on in my on my bone to heal it up properly. And I ended up having to have two surgeries because the plate pulled out at one point. And my left hand was crushed. I have I don't know if you can see, but I don't have any knuckles here. This is messed up pretty bad. My fingers are, as you can see, I can pull it down and there's nothing there. 
the whole hand was crushed. I know this is pretty grainy video, but uh, I'm supposed to be wearing a brace, but I thought for the video I would not. And then I have now grown overgrowth of bone here, and I'm not even supposed to be bending my wrist like this. That hurts really bad, but um, I have a brace. I'm supposed to wear 24 hours a day, seven days a week, keep it in my sleep. And I took it off for the video uh, so I could show you. And uh, so I had I I had these injuries and I was in the hospital three months. And then uh, over the years, you know, I tried to be strong and I, I was determined to get up and, and do things and walk again. But because I lost two inches of my femur bone, which is in your thigh, that they they could not get that fixed. They tried. They actually, in the hospital, um, did a bone graft, which is basically the back part of your pelvic bone. You have like a butterfly. I don't know if you know, I've seen a pelvic uh, x-ray before, but you have like a butterfly shape. And on the back of that, there's what they call the iliac crest and when you have a bone graft they literally take a chisel and a hammer and they chip away the bone and they put the bone in to whatever area of your body that they want to generate bone growth and they tried to generate bone growth to grow the two inches back because they wanted to save my knee and it didn't work so they had to plate my leg, my stump, at the very end of it. So I have a plate with a bolt going through my knee. And I don't have much below the knee, just about this much of a little piece of bone. And of my, uh, uh, God, I can't remember if it's the tibia or fibula, but uh, the larger bone is about that big and then the shorter bone just a little stubby the smaller one and um, I can't bend my knee and I have to get prosthetic legs that have the knee joint down by closer to my ankle like halfway between in the calf area so that it takes the pressure off otherwise my leg stays like sticking out when I try to sit down and it puts pressure on the stump, and that hurts really bad. So they have to make, it's a very strange looking prosthetic leg. I don't even have a normal prosthetic leg. I'm not like other amputees. I am uh, definitely rare there. So I've been this way for over 30 years. In July, it'll be 31 years. And over the years, I have raised my son, I've worked. I don't work anymore because I can't, but uh, I have damaged my back really bad. My back has now got um, degenerative discs, root nerve impingement, and scoliosis. So it's it's crooked, it's shaped really bad, and I have now um, uh, arthritis. Uh, bursitis, tendonitis, all the itises you can think of probably, and other things in my hips, in my shoulders, in my hands, and I'm just in a great deal of severe torturous pain all the time. This is worse than being captive in a foreign country being tortured. <laughs> At least there's a, a reason if you're being hit, the pain is there and it, there's a reason for it. Um, it's something, it's a react to, if it's a reactive pain, whereas this is just there all the time. It's so difficult to live just in a constant state of pain. You have no idea. <laughs> And most people don't understand. They look at you, you look normal to them. And uh, my phone's ringing, sorry. That's my, that's 
my Eden brother. I'll have to call him back. Um, most people look at you and they they don't see the pain. You can't see this kind of pain. They see me limping and they see that I have a prosthetic leg. But it's not like beams of light are around me showing everyone that I'm in grueling pain. So you can't see intractable pain. You can't see it. And because when you're in intractable pain, especially for a long time, you have to learn to suffer and deal with it. And you try not to project that on everyone around you. You try to stay happy and you try to enjoy life. And you try not to, you know, make everyone else feel bad or miserable. You know, no one will want to be around you if you're just constantly crying and moaning and groaning with your pain. And no one wants to be around somebody like that. It, it makes them feel bad and uncomfortable. And so you hide it. You learn to hide it. And you learn to smile and laugh. And anyway, even though you're really dying inside. So, intractable pain is an issue that is ignored. I have contacted... It started with, you know, we're having problems with, of course, of course, um, opioid dependency and overdosing, which actually, you know, people hear the news and, and whatnot, and they don't realize that, that statistically, most of those overdoses are from, from actual uh, heroin users, and Honestly, if you read uh, Forrest Tennant's information and the information on intractable pain, um, you will see that intractable pain, you can die from it. You can actually have a heart attack or a stroke from what they call pain surge. And basically, when you're in that much pain all the time, you you have a high blood pressure and uh, you know your body's reacting inside your organs are slowly breaking down because you're struggling so hard inside and a lot of times people who take high doses of opioids that just barely relieves their pain really and they're normal on them um they go to the hospital with a heart attack or what have you, and they automatically see the amount of medication in them, and they assume that you're overdosing. And a lot of times, that's not the case. Nobody looks at the records to see if this person has already been taking this amount of medication. Nobody looks at that. So, um... So the statistics are actually incorrect, and you cannot rely on the statistics 100% uh, until there is a study done on intractable pain patients, and it is a, a subject that is throughout the community of physicians, um, the CDC, anyone who's involved the medical boards until there is a study that is done on intractable pain patients of all kinds and there is more communication between doctors and, and patients and hospitals and things that until there is some sort of a way to let people know hey this person has intractable pain disease it's a real thing and they take high doses of medications. And the medications have probably allowed them to live as long as they have. Because without them, they surely would have died before. Pain can kill you if it is severe enough. And I'm telling you, without my pain medication, I think I would be dead already. And I don't 
take them to be high or whatever people may think because they're high dosage. In fact, I don't even feel that. The only thing I feel when I take the medications is some relief. And I'm not even completely out of pain. It's just some relief from the pain to make it a little more tolerable to live. So this is a, a subject that needs to be addressed. This is something that has been ignored for too long. And so many people are suffering because there is not a standard for us. They throw us in the category of either addict or addicted, or they throw us in the category of chronic pain, where chronic pain could just be a sore knee that doesn't go away, not as severe as what somebody in severe intractable pain who has pain every second of every day, even when they're in bed. You can't even sleep. Sometimes you have to take sleeping medication to sleep, and you even wake up screaming sometimes with that. It's awful, torturous pain. You couldn't even imagine it. And so we've got to bring awareness to this disease. It's a real thing. You can look it up on the internet. It's actually called intractable pain disease. It's different from chronic pain. It's different from acute pain. It's in its own world. And it's horrible. And anyone who suffers from it knows what I'm talking about. This is not something that I would even wish on my worst enemy. It's horrible. Horrible way to live. And you got to just keep going on. You know, some people may even kill themselves over it. And I know people with intractable pain disease have thought about ending it before only for the purpose of getting out of the pain, not because they're depressed because of life or they don't want to live because things in life suck or whatever, only to get rid of the pain. And that is a really sad thing. We should not have to suffer in pain. And now because of the people who have abused these opioid medications and heroin and drugs and things, and because of the lack of study and most likely the misinterpretation of some people who take prescription medications dying and them saying that they overdosed when in fact they probably were alive as long as they were because of the medication and they had a pain surge that caused a heart attack or a stroke. Excuse me. And so they most likely uh, died because of that, but they chalk it up as an overdose because they have a high amount of medications in them. Um, they, these things are real and they need to be addressed. And until they are, we're suffering. So now they're lowering the dosages for all patients with chronic pain. And they're not separating intractable pain patients where there is no cure, no surgery. There's nothing. There's no miracle cure. Nothing works for intractable pain sufferers other than an easement of pain with the opioid medications, which is, by the way, something that nature grows. And I think it was put here for people like us who have pain and need the relief. Now, some people tell me to try medical marijuana and stuff. I, I have tried that and it does not work for my pain. Now it works for the nausea, but I have another medication that works for nausea. Um, my nausea is caused by pain, of course, sometimes, but also from stomach acids, uh, 
so acid reflux, you know, I have a, a problem with my esophagus, the valve doesn't close, and I get nausea from that, and yes, medical marijuana does help with that on a temporary basis or emergency basis, but I have other medications that uh, I can take that are prescribed to me that, uh, that work just fine, so there's no need for me to be on the medical marijuana. It would just be to get high, which is not something that I'm interested in. I'm almost 49 years old, and the last thing I want to do is just be high. If I wanted to be out of it, I could drink alcohol. It's You can buy that in the local store. I uh, I don't want that. I don't like the feeling of being out of control or not completely in my right mind, which actually without taking this medication, I can't think straight. That is another thing. It's like you lose your mind being in that much pain. So I guess my point of this is, is to bring awareness to the world and to start getting attention from other intractable pain sufferers and getting the support that we need. We need to start um, fighting for our rights. We need to fight the states, the country. We need to get the CDC to be aware that this is a real disease and that we are an exception to the rules. And we need to be put in the category like cancer patients are. You know, they, they don't hesitate to give cancer patients or end-of-life patients as much opioid medication as they want. But people who are going to live in that kind of pain, and I'm, I don't even know, we, maybe we're in worse pain sometimes, but we live for a long time, and that's the horrible thing. We're not in, a, uh, unless we have, of course, a pain surge and die of the heart attack or stroke from the pain surge or from not getting the medication and, and you know, your blood pressure rises and then that happens and, of course, your life will end sooner. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to live for a long time like this, especially if you're younger. My God, um, I've been this way for 30 plus years. Uh, it's been under control until the last 10 years. It's gotten really bad. I've taken smaller doses of uh, opiates since the accident happened. But um, in the past 10 years, I've had a lot of things start getting worse. My body's falling apart on me. And so I've had to go higher on my doses. And I've actually spoken to the leading expert on intractable pain and um, on uh, addiction and stuff. He actually started the very first pain clinic, didn't even know he was doing it. You'll have to look him up on the internet. His name is Forrest Tennant, and you can find a lot of information on him on the internet. He has a web page, uh, forresttennant.com, and, uh, and also, you know, they, they've even got him in Wikipedia. So, yeah, I'm advertising for everyone right now. <laughs> so, um, but you can find him there, and he will talk about intractable pain and what it can do. Uh, people need to know, and we need to bring attention, legally bring attention to this horrible, torturous condition and disease. It is a disease. There is nothing that can be done. There is no cure. There's nothing in my condition, especially uh, even if I had a back surgery because my pelvic is cricket and my leg is off, I would jam it right back out of place. They won't even give me back surgery. Um, the shots that they give, the, the uh, cortisone or whatever shots, they don't even last me a few days, if that I had a cortisone shot in my shoulder a couple of weeks ago. It did absolutely nothing to help me. I'm still in severe pain and waking up screaming with my shoulder 
and my arm all the way down my arm into my hands. My hands are tingling and hurting at the same time. It's very weird. But uh, anyway, there is no cure for me. I have been told by many doctors exactly this. You're just going to have to live with it. There's nothing anyone can do for you. Well, there is. There can be a law that covers people with intractable pain because it's cruel and we need a quality of life. There needs to be a law that the doctors can prescribe us higher doses of opioid medications so that we can be normal, think straight, live a normal life. I don't want to be catatonic. I don't want to be all drugged out. I want to be able to think and do things. I would like to do things. I would like to learn more. I would even like to become an attorney. But God, I can't even concentrate on studying something like that at all. I can't concentrate on many things when I'm in that kind of pain because all you can think about is you just are hurting. You can't hardly breathe because breathing hurts. It's just an awful state to be in. It's just horrible. And we should not be limited to the amount of medications just because of the simple fact that there's an addiction factor or because of the simple fact that uh that there's a tolerance built and you have to increase the doses over time or because of the fear of overdosing. If you're under a doctor's care and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, then you should not be overdosing. The doctor will care for you. They should know. They should be taught about intractable pain and tolerance and they should test it out and until you're on a level that you're comfortable with, that your pain is relieved. Now you will probably always have some pain unless you wanna be catatonic, which I don't. So you will have to live with some pain and deal with it still. But you can get pain relief and I think that, that that's gonna take a high dose for some people like myself who's been in this condition for almost 31 years. And so my tolerance is quite high for these medications. And um, so I need more than most people, but I've seen people out there and talked to people out there who aren't nearly in this kind of pain. They have little things wrong and they're on way higher doses than me. But I guess I'm just strong and I do understand the concept of the tolerance and the fact that I'm going to need more higher doses later on. And I'm probably, unless I die of the pain surge, I am probably going to live at least another 31 more years and in this condition. And so as time goes, I'll need higher doses. So I only want enough to make my pain tolerable and make life tolerable because if I go all the way to the highest doses then where am I going to go when I begin to tolerate that amount I won't have a higher dose to go to and I don't want that so I'm only taking a, a small amount according to what I heard when I talked to uh, Dr. Tennant. I'm really not asking for much for my condition. Um, he's actually surprised that I'm not. But like I said, I, I have to think of the future as well. And I need to make sure that I'm only taking what I need to ease my pain enough to tolerate and that, to have a decent quality of life and um and that's that's where that lies that's my thinking i don't want to go overboard with it uh, although the doses i take may make other people drop down in an overdose and may be a lot to other people it's not a lot to me it's just right um i just got my doctor to finally get me back on what I was on before because I've been suffering 
quite a bit for the last year. They tried to lower the doses because the CDC is coming down on on this opioid medication treatment for pain. But uh, like I said, in, intractable pain is different. There is no cure. You can take us completely off, take us down to a low dose, put us on that low dose for a long period of time, and we'll probably be in the hospital or die from pain surge because the pain is so bad. It is torturous bad. And um, that's kind of horrible for you to do. We deserve a quality of life that other people have. We deserve for the rest of our lives, no matter if it's a year or 10 years or 40 years, we deserve to have a decent quality of life, be able to live day to day as another person would, even if there's some pain. I mean, everybody feels aches and pains probably as they get older. So there is some pain we have to deal with, but a tolerable amount of pain. And so we need this medication. It is a necessity. It is not something that we just want to do. God, I wish that I would be, I would definitely be a guinea pig if they had a complete uh, robotic or whatever skeletal structure and they can completely change my entire spine and arms and legs and pelvis and give me an entire new body, skeletal structure and tissue growth or whatever. I mean, we should be there by now, but I don't know why we're not. But I would definitely do that, and, and if there was no pain involved, I would completely get off the medication because there would be no pain. I wouldn't need it anymore, but that's not the case. My case is I need the medication, or I will die, and I won't die from overdosing. I won't die from anything other than being in pain, and it's cruel. So I guess I'm not going to drag this out any longer. I've been over 30 minutes here. So I'm just going to, this is my first video on intractable pain. I've brought my story out a little. I would like others who are in intractable pain to please contact me. Tell me your story. I will try to, to check in every day and see if anyone's responding to this. I know there are others out there in intractable pain for other reasons. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like mine where my body was broken up by a, a wreck. It could be other things. There are many other people out there that are suffering all the time. So let me know, contact me, and let's get something started. We need to get laws and legislation changed. We need to get this out there. I've already begun working on that. I've contacted the medical board. I have contacted my state legislation, um, legislatures, and, and I'm working on it. I've even contacted the CDC, who is actually denying that they have anything to do with regulating this. So that's going to be a challenge. But if we all come together in this, we can get this done. We can do something for us intractable pain disease sufferers. So um, this is my first video, and I'm hoping that um, people will respond to it and that we can all come together and make others realize that there is an exception to the rule with opioid pain medication takers, um, people who take them for a very good reason and not just overtake them for, you know, chronic pain or for acute pain. People who take them for a, a, a state of constant torturous pain like myself. Uh, so contact me uh, on my link. I'm going to start doing uh, intractable pain videos. This is video number one. Uh, look up Forrest Tenet, Dr. Forrest Tenet. That's 
F O R E S T. Last name Tenant, T E N N A N T. And you can look him up. He is great. I have his cell phone number and and his email and we talk and he is an expert on the subject. He has studied and he's written a lot of articles and and books and things on the subject. He's done a lot of studies and um he will he will be a great help to you. And um of course he's getting older so um you need to, to talk to him soon. Um, he He's going to help. We're going to work together, and he's going to help. We're going to try to get things changed. So, um, excuse me. Um, it's hard to keep your emotions sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, this is my first video. I'm done. I'm not going to bother you and uh, take up any more of your time. But we really need to get this out there intractable pain disease is real it is something that is afflicting people it's torturous and it makes life a living hell and we need to have support of of the medical field of the cdc of um of everybody our family and friends because they suffer too when we're suffering uh we're not exactly the best to be around. It's just a horrible thing. It affects everybody involved. So let's start a movement here to get this disease noticed, recognized on the record. Let's get it in writing. Let's make laws to protect us and the doctors that we see. Let's make this something that is is no longer a roller coaster ride for us patients and um and let's let's not suffer anymore we need to stand up for ourselves it's not any way to live this is not a life that anyone wants to live this is not a life at all so we need to get this changed so contact me here and um we can talk and um if you want to email me, just make sure you title it um, that in, in a, such a way that I know you're responding to my YouTube video. Um, my email is lagunaberry at gmail.com. Um, so you can email me if you want. Just uh, make sure you title it because I get a lot of spam and I don't read them. Make sure that you title it something in response to your YouTube video on intractable pain or something. Okay, so I hope this gets out there. And um, thank you for watching my video, my first intractable pain video. I'm here not only to be uh, a voice and an advocate for uh, my own pain, but for others as well. I want to get this out there. So I am on your side and I'm here to fight for you as well as myself. So just contact me. Thank you for watching my video and um, God bless y'all. <laughs>